Section 9 of Talks by Abdul Baha, given in Paris by Abdul Baha Abbas, translated by Lady Sara Louisa Blomfield. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater. Talks by Abdul Baha, given in Paris by Abdul Baha Abbas. Section 9 the benefits of god to man for avenue de commons october twenty seventh god alone ordereth all things and is all powerful why then does he send trials to his servants the trials of man are of two kinds a the consequences of his own actions if a man eats too much he ruins his digestion. If he takes poison, he becomes ill or dies. If a person gambles, he will lose his money. If he drinks too much, he will lose his equilibrium. All these sufferings are caused by the man himself. It is quite clear, therefore, that certain sorrows are the result of our own deeds. B. Other sufferings there are which come upon the faithful of God. Consider the great sorrows endured by Christ and by his apostles. Those who suffer most attain to the greatest perfection. Those who declare a wish to suffer much for Christ's sake must prove their sincerity. Those who proclaim their longing to make great sacrifices can only prove their truth by their deeds. Job proved the fidelity of his love for God by being faithful through his great adversity, as well as during the prosperity of his life. The apostles of Christ, who steadfastly bore all their trials and sufferings, did they not prove their faithfulness? Was not their endurance the best proof? These griefs are now ended. Caiaphas lived a comfortable and happy life, while Peter's life was full of sorrow and trial. Which of these two is the more enviable? Assuredly, we should choose the present state of Peter, for he possesses immortal life, whilst Caiaphas has won eternal shame. The trials of Peter tested his fidelity. Tests are benefits from God, for which we should thank him. Grief and sorrow do not come to us by chance. They are sent to us by the divine mercy for our own perfecting. While a man is happy, he may forget his God. But when grief comes and sorrows overwhelm him, then will he remember his Father who is in heaven, and who is able to deliver him from his humiliations. Men who suffer not attain no perfection. The plant most pruned by the gardeners is that one which, when the summer comes, will have the most beautiful blossoms and the most abundant fruit. The labourer cuts up the earth with his plough, and from that earth comes the rich and plentiful harvest. The more a man is chastened, the greater is the harvest of spiritual virtues shown forth by him. A soldier is no good general until he has been in the front of the fiercest battle and has received the deepest wounds. The prayer of the prophets of God has always been, and still is, O oh God, I long to lay down my life in the path to Thee. I desire to shed my blood for Thee, and to make the supreme sacrifice. Beauty and Harmony in Diversity October 28th the creator of all is one god from this same god all creation sprang into existence 
and he is the one goal towards which everything in nature yearns this conception was embodied in the words of christ when he said i am the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end man is the sum of creation and the perfect man is the expression of the complete thought of the creator the word of god consider the world of created beings how varied and diverse they are in species yet with one sole origin all the differences that appear are those of outward form and color this diversity of type is apparent throughout the whole of nature behold a beautiful garden full of flowers shrubs and trees each flower has a different charm a peculiar beauty its own delicious perfume and beautiful color the trees too how varied are they in size in growth in foliage and what different fruits they bear yet all these flowers shrubs and trees spring from the self-same earth the same sun shines upon them and the same clouds give them rain so it is with humanity it is made up of many races and its peoples are of different color white black yellow brown and red but they all come from the same god and are all servants to him this diversity among the children of men has unhappily not the same effect as it has among the vegetable creation where the spirit shown is more harmonious among men exists the diversity of animosity and it is this that causes war and hatred among the different nations of the world differences which are only those of blood also cause them to destroy and kill one another alas that this should still be so let us look rather at the beauty in diversity the beauty of harmony and learn a lesson from the vegetable creation if you beheld a garden in which all the plants were the same as to form color and perfume it would not seem beautiful to you at all but rather monotonous and dull the garden which is pleasing to the eye and which makes the heart glad is the garden in which are growing side by side flowers of every hue form and perfume and the joyous contrast of color is what makes for charm and beauty so is it with trees an orchard full of fruit trees is a delight so is a plantation planted with many species of shrubs it is just the diversity and variety that constitutes its charm each flower each tree each fruit besides being beautiful in itself brings out by contrast the qualities of the others and shows to advantage the special loveliness of each and all thus should it be among the children of men the diversity in the human family should be the cause of love and harmony as it is in music where many different notes blend together in the making of a perfect chord if you meet those of different race and color to yourself do not mistrust them and withdraw yourself into your own shell of conventionality but rather be glad and show them kindness think of them as different colored roses growing in the beautiful garden of humanity and rejoice to be among them likewise when you meet those whose opinions differ from your own do not turn away your face from them all are seeking truth and there are many roads leading thereto truth has many aspects but it remains always and forever one do not allow difference of opinion 
or diversity of thought to separate you from your fellow men or to be the cause of dispute hatred and strife in your hearts rather search diligently for the truth and make all men your friends every edifice is made of many different stones yet each depends on the other to such an extent that if one were displaced the whole building would suffer if one is faulty the structure is imperfect baha'u'llah has drawn the circle of unity he has made a design for the uniting of all the peoples and for the gathering of them all under the shelter of the tent of universal unity this is the work of the divine bounty and we must all strive with heart and soul until we have the reality of unity in our midst and as we work so will strength be given unto us leave all thought of self and strive only to be obedient and submissive to the will of god in this way only shall we become citizens of the kingdom of god and attain unto life everlasting end of section nine